Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Right now we're going to work on an example of making a histogram using our TI-89 calculator. So you can see off to the left I have all the data that I want to make into this histogram. So let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see how this process works. All right. So the first thing I need to do is get all of this data into the calculator. Right now I'm on the home screen and I want to get to that data matrix editor screen. So I'm going to press apps and then arrow over until I have that data matrix icon highlighted. Then press enter. Now, first it wants to know do I want to work on some current data, maybe make some new data. And we want to make some new data. So let's go ahead and select three and then enter. That's going to want a little bit more information. First thing it wants to know is the type. Let's go ahead and leave that as data. Arrow down. It wants to know where to store it. Let's, let's leave that one as the main folder. That will work just fine. And lastly, it wants to know what to call this collection of data. Now, don't get too picky on the names. It, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Uh, and just really give it something. So I'm going to call it E. All right. So now everything looks good. Let's press Enter. And Enter one more time. This will bring into the data matrix editor. And you can see that it looks like basically a big Excel sheet. So let's go ahead and start typing in all of our data in this first column. All right, that was quite a bit of data. Take note that at the top of this column here, it has a little C1. So that is the name of the column where all of this data is stored. That will be important in just a little bit. Now the good news is all of the data is now stored in the calculator, and we can start working to make that plot. But there's a few things we want to set up first, okay? One of the first things is all of our options for the plot. Up at the top, you'll see F2 says Plot Setup, so go ahead and press F2. Now you can set up lots of different options for plots, but we want to put everything into plot one for now, so you can see that it's selected. Let's press F1 for define. All right, now remember we're going to make a histogram. So for the plot type, let's change this to histogram. Enter. Arrow down. The next option I need to enter in is it wants to know where to gather this data from and make the histogram. Remember, all of this data was stored in that column that said C1 on top. So I'm going to type in C1. All right? Looks good. Let's go down one more. This one says histogram bucket width. That wants to know how wide to make each of those columns. Well, I only want them to include one number at a time, so let's leave this as one. All right, keep going. Use frequency and categories. I'm going to leave that as no. And it looks like all of our options are set. So let's press Enter. And there you go. Everything's defined. All right, now there's one more thing that we have to set up before taking a look at our histogram. And that's our window. So let's press the green button and go to Window. Now, by default, usually this is somewhere between negative 10 and 10. And you may, may have made a few other changes if you've been graphing other things. But we want to make sure that we get a good view of the data. Well, remember that along the horizontal column, that comes from the names or the values of all of our variables. And right now we're working with numbers between 7 and 13. So I want my x to incorporate all the numbers between 7 and 13. Now to give myself a little bit of wiggle room, I'm going to put my x minimum to 6 and my x maximum to 14. There we go. That should give us plenty of, of range. Scroll down. Let's change the y's. The Y, the vertical axis, that gives us information about the frequency, how many of these things we have. And if I look at the numbers, I'm dealing with anywhere between, you know, only a frequency of one and a frequency of looks like five things. So again, let's give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And I'll put the minimum at negative one. And the maximum, uh, let's put that at seven. All right, there we go. So now all of our options are set for our window. It's time to go look at our histogram. Let's press the green button and graph. And there's our lovely histogram right there. You'll notice that each of these bars represents 
one of our numbers. So this first bar represents the 7, and it is 3 high. The next bar represents the 8, and it is 5 high. Now, unfortunately, when you look at this histogram, it's very plain. And if you don't have the data in front of you, you may forget exactly what you're plotting out here. That's okay. You can have the calculator tell you how high each of these are. This is what the trace option is for. Press the F3 to see how this works. So when I press the F3, it tells me where I'm located, and it has a little end to tell me how high it is. And since I allowed myself a little bit of wiggle room, it's not on a bar right now. It's actually over here on this blank spot at 6. So, of course, I don't have any 6s. It tells me n equals 0. But if I press my right arrow button, it'll jump up to that first bar, and it says that I'm on the 7 bar, and that n equals 3, meaning there are three sevens. And you can use your arrow buttons to keep jumping back and forth between the bars to see what they are and how many of them you have. So here I'm on the 8 bar, and it looks like I have five eights. And there you have it. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.